ಸದಾಶಿವಸಮಾರಂಭಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಯೋಗಿನ ವಿಶ್ವನಾಥ ಕೆಮ್ಮಸ್ಮತ್ತಸ್ವರೂಪಿಣ ಆತ್ಮಲಾಭಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಲಾಭಂ ವಕ್ತ ಆರಂ ನ ಕದಾಚನ ಗೀತಾರ್ಥಗ್ರಂಥಕರ್ತಾರಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರು ಪ್ರಣಮಾಮ್ಯಹಂ ಯೋಂತ ಪ್ರವಿಶ್ಯ ಮೇ ವಾಚಂ ಧೃತಿ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯತ್ ಓಂ ನಮಃ ಸಭಾಭ್ಯ ಸಭಾಪತಿಭ್ಯ ಭೋ ನಮಃ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಧ್ರುವ ಸ್ತುತಿ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಫೋರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕಸ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಏಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನೈನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ತಟಸ್ಥ ಲಕ್ಷಣ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಲಾಡ್ particularly the immanence aspect of it he is getting into the bhakti because it is bhakti that finally leads us to the realization of the reality and here comes the peak level of that bhakti shloka number 7 tena smaram tatitaram priyami samartyam etam vata suta sugrut griha vittadaraham etvabjanaabh ೀಯ ಪದಾರವಿಂದ ಸೌಗಂಧ್ಯ ಲುಬ್ಧ ಹೃದಯೇಶು ಕೃತ ಪ್ರಸಂಗಾ ತೇನ ಸ್ಮರಂತರ ಪ್ರಿಯಮೀಶಮರ್ಥ್ಯಂ ತೇನ ಸ್ಮರಂತಿ ದೇ ಡೋಂಟ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ತೇ ನ ಸ್ಮರಂತಿ ಅತಿತರ ಪ್ರಿಯಮೀಶಮರ್ಥ್ಯಂ ದಿ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಯರ್ ಡಿಯರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಡಿಯರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಓನ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಅತಿತರಾಂ ಪ್ರಿಯಮೀಶ ಮರ್ತ್ಯಂ ದಿಸ್ ಮಾರ್ಟಲ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಈಸ್ ರಿಯರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಈವನ್ ದಿಸ್ ದೇ ಡೋಂಟ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಹೂ ಏ ಚಾನ್ವತ ಸುತ ಸುಹೃತ್ ಗೃಹ ವಿತ್ತದಾರ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದೇ ಡೋಂಟ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಾರ್ಟಲ್ ಬಾಡಿ ದೇ ಡೋಂಟ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಸುತ ಸುಹೃತ್ ಗೃಹ ವಿತ್ತದಾರ ಸುತ ಸನ್ ಸುಹೃತ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಗೃಹ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌಸ್ ವಿತ್ತ ಪ್ರಾಮಣಿ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದಾರ ವೈಫ್ ಸೊ ಸುತ ಸುಹೃದ್ ಗೃಹ ವಿತ್ತ ದಾರ ಕಿತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಿನ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಗೋ ವಿತ್ ದಟ್ ಏ ಚಾನ್ವತ ಸುತ ಸುಹೃದ್ ಗೃಹ ವಿತ್ತ ದಾರ ತೇ ನ ಸ್ಮರಂತಿ ದೇ ಡೋಂಟ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಏ ಏ ತು ಅಬ್ಜನಾಭ ಅಬ್ಜನಾಭ ಹೇ ಪದ್ಮನಾಭ ಏ ಭವತೀಯ ಪದಾರವಿಂದ ಸೌಗಂಧ್ಯ ಲುಪ್ತ ಹೃದಯೇಶು ಕೃತ ಪ್ರಸಂಗ ಭವತೀಯ ಪದಾರವಿಂದ ಯುವರ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಫ್ರಾಗ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಗ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಲವ್ ಸೌಗಂಧ್ಯಂ ಸೌಗಂಧ್ಯ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಗ್ರೇಟೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟ್ ದ ಆಫ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾವಿಷ್ಣು ಸೌಗಂಧ್ಯಂ ಲುಪ್ತ ಹೃದಯೇಶು ಕೃತ ಪ್ರಸಂಗಾ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ದರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಫ್ರಾಗ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಲವ್ ಶೋನ್ ಟು ಯು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶೋನ್ ಬೈ ಯು ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ದರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಫ್ರಾಗ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಲವ್ ಸೌಗಂಧ್ಯ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಸೌಗಂಧ್ಯ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ದರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ದಮ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಸಚ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ತೇ ನ ಸ್ಮರಂತಿ ಅತಿತರ ಪ್ರಿಯಮೀಶ ಮರ್ತ್ಯಂ ದೇ ಡೂ ನಾಟ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದೇರ್ ಓನ್ ಹೌಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಓನ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ದೇರ್ ಓನ್ ಕಿತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಿನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ನೋ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಟೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಗೋಪೀಸ್ ದಿ ಗೋಪೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಅವೇಸಿಂಗ್ ಲವ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಯು ಸಿ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದಿ ರೋಲ್ ಮಾಡಲ್ ಸನ್ಮನಸ್ಕಾಸ್ತ ಲಾಪಾ ಸನ್ ತದ್ವಿಚೇಷ್ಟಸ್ತದಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಸದ್ಗುಣೇವ ಗಾಯಂತ್ಯ ಆತ್ಮಗಾರಾಣಿ ಸಸ್ಮರು ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಭಾಗವತ ವೇರ್ ಸನ್ಮನಸ್ಕಾಸ್ತದಾ ದೇವರ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಇ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಹಿ ದೇವರ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಮ್ ದೇವರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಆಲಾಪಾ ತತ್ ವಿಚೇಷ್ಟ ದೇ ವರ್ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ವರ್ 
Natmagarani Sasmaru, their own houses they forgot. Natmagarani Sasmaru. Gita itself praises this kind of thing. Sabudhyasta Atmanaha, Sanishta Stapara Yana, Gachanta Punaravritim, Yana Nidhi Uta Kalmasha, fifth chapter. Sadbuddhaya, Sadatmanaha, your intellect totally merged in that. Your soul, your thinking, your entire heart and soul merged in them. Sannishta Satparayanaha, always thinking, concentrating on him. Satparayanaha, keeping him only as keeping him only as your refuge. Such people, Gachanti Apunaravrathim, they reach that kind of place from which you never return. From the finite, you reach the infinite. In fact, such a scene happens in the Valmiki Ramayana, in the Sundara Kanda, where Hanuman is looking for Sita in the Ashokavana. He says, sits on the top of the tree and is watching Sita. And later, he describes this to Lord Rama. Naisha Pashyati Rakshasyaga Neman Pushpa Palat Ruman Ekastagrdaya Noonam Rama Meva Nupashyati She sees Rama alone. She is not seeing the Rakshasis there. She is not seeing the Pushpa Palat Ruman, the fruits, the flowers, the forest, the trees. No, she is not seeing any of these things. Ekastagrdaya Noonam Her heart is concentrated on that single thing, Ram, Ram, Ramameva Nupashyati. So, this is a great, uh, this is this is the great example of Tenas Maran Tatizaram Priyamisham Atyam, what they, what Dhruva says here. In fact, Tulsi has a beautiful, Tulsi Das has a beautiful expression for this kind of thing. He may not describe it this way there, but when Hanuman describes the position, the the status of Sita in Ashokavana uh, to Rama. When he explains this, he says, Rama, Rama worries what is going to happen to her. She is alone, she is separate there. But Hanuman says, don't worry Lord, she is having your name as her watchman there. Namapaharu, he uses a beautiful name. Namapaharu Divasa Nishi Dhyan Tumar Kapad. She is always day and night, Divasa Nishi, Namapaharu. Your Nam is the watchman taking care of her. Nothing will happen to her. So, Tenasmaran Chatitaram Priyamisham Hatyam Echan Matasutta Sukhrit Grihavitta Dara. This is the result of satsang. This is the peak level of bhakti. In this sloka, this sloka you have the word Abhyanabha, Abhyanabha, third line. Yet Abhyanabha Bhavati Yapadaravinda. He Padmanabha, Abhya means Padma, Padmanabha. Hey, Padmanabha, we all know the Lord thing. But we have never thought about the meaning of Padmanabha. Padmanabha means the Lord, but Padmanabha has three meanings. One, Nabhi is navel, Padma is lotus. From that navel, the low stem, lotus stem emanated and from that created Brahma emanated. Padmanabha. That is why he is called Padmanabha. Another meaning, the navel itself is beautifully shaped, beautifully shaped as a Padmam, a lotus. That is another meaning. Another meaning is more sophisticated. One who resides in the heart lotus of not only the human body, but every body, every living being. Padma kosha prati kasakam, kritayin cha pyatho mukam, adho nishtya vidasyante, nabhyam uparitrishtati. The description of the Atman in the Mahanarayana Upanishad about the it, it sitting in the heart lotus. So that is this. That is why Padmanabha. These are the three ordinary literary meanings of Padmanabha. There is an esoteric meaning. So, <coughs> let me have a little digression for about three minutes. Little digression. Padmanabha. Padma stands for time. How? So, here there is a, uh, some a little mathematics. That is, 
in mathematical literature written in sanskrit in olden days in the traditional days single words were being used for powers of 10 ek 10 to power 0 dasha 10 to the power 1 shata sahasra 10 to the power 3 shata ek dasha shata sahasra ayuta laksha prayuta koti koti is 10 to the power 7 prayuta um, uh, koti arbuda abja karva nikarva 10 to the power 10 11 mahapadma 10 to the power 12 shank jaladi and it goes on up to 10 to the power 19 we have single words single words in sanskrit and these words have been easily easily used in all sanskrit literature mahabharata puranas everywhere these words are used for these numbers so mahapadma padma means 10 power 12 okay now kaliyuga is 4.32 lakhs right so 4.32 times 10 to the power 5 the four yugas kali treta dwapara uh, krita yuga the uh, total time will be um, kali yuga is something two times that then three times that then four times that if you add up it will be 10 times so the maha yuga the chatur yuga adds up to um, adds up to 4.32 times 10 to the power 6 years but a kalpa is 1000 maha yugas kalpa is 1000 maha yugas um, you see yuga sagasram so say that gita itself so that is 4.32 times 10 power 9 1000 into 10 power 6 so 4.32 10 to the power 9 that is billion years is one kalpa this is one day of brahma 4.32 billion years night is equal so it is 8.64 billion years day and night every day of brahma is has a name this day is shweta varaha kalpa some kalpa before that will be padma kalpa before that some other kalpa before that some other kalpa each one is 10 to the power 4.3 i mean 4.32 into 10 to the power 9 years human years so like that about 20 to 25 days have been mentioned in various parts of the puranas so even if you are very liberal the i mean if you want to liberally give some estimate of this suppose there are 100 days of brahma known known to history mythological history that gives 8.64 into 10 to the power 9 8, 864 into 10 to the power 9 right this is as far as we can go in terms of time and the next power of 10 is 10 power 12 that is padma so padma denotes the origin of time padma nangabha the origin of time you see in physics we are told that the time started along with big bang what happened with before big bang nobody knows and you are not supposed to ask about it and time did time start there big bang whatever that time was it's not so here you see you have padma is the pointer to the origin of time and the origin of time is the nabhi of mahavishnu padma nabha anyway that was uh, the digression is over we come back to shloka 7 ek tobjana bhavavati padaravind saugandhya lubdha hridaye shukrita prasanga so that is the peak jewel of bhakti and now dhruva dhruva goes to the eighth shloka where he comes back to the tatassa lakshana <coughs> so the eighth shloka triyangaga dujasari srupadeva daitya martya devi parichitam sadasat vishesham rupam stavishta majate mahadatyanekam nata param param vetme nayatra vadagam you see this dhruva stuti which contains 12 shlokas simply exhausts the entire vedanta entire mythology everything everything is there so here 
animals, the animal world, naga, the trees and mountains, dvija, birds, sari sripa, reptiles, deva, the divines, jaitya, the asuras, martya, the humans, all of them together constitute this universe. Right? Parichitam, Martyadibi Parichitam, Sadasat Vishesham, Sati Asati Vishesham, Sati is the um, stula, whatever visible, that is earth, water, fire, the three elements and all the things made up of them, that is Sati. Asati is the invisible sukshma, that is the air and akasha ether or they said ether in olden days but it is akasha space so air and space asat sadasat these five things make up everything so sadasat vishesham earmark the made up of all this sati and asat this is the universe you see so he has described the universe rupam savishtam this is all visible to me whatever this universe is there is all visible to me. Aja, Aja means he unborn, O Lord. Te Mahadat Janekam Natav Param Parama Vedbi Nayatra Vadaha. This is a very peculiar uh, pregnant sentence. O Lord, I am able to see this entire universe. They say that there is something beyond this. Huh? which cannot be even spoken by words. It can, the words recoil from that. There is something beyond this. They are saying, I don't know this. I don't know. I know only this universe. Rupam stavishtam ajate mahadat janekam natav param parama vedmi atav param. Beyond this, I do not know anything. Na yatra vadaha, where they say there is no speech. Dhruva is therefore saying, that the Lord who is visible, who is manifesting in this universe is supposed to exist even beyond this transcendental. You see, so Dhruva comes here to, to the Tatastha Lakshana, but the transcendence aspect, the immanence aspect is he is already inside. Inside this universe is his Vishwam Vishnu, who I said. But Vishnu, Bhagir Vyapti, he goes beyond this, the transcendent. You see, these are the two pillars of Hindu philosophy, of Sanasana Dharma immanence, transcendence. Antar Vyapti, Bhagur Vyapti. In fact, the Tamil word Kadavul exactly means this. Kada Ul. Kada means kadand, beyond, transcendent. Ul means ulle, that is immanence, in, inside. So, rupam savishtam ajate mahadat janekam natah param parama vetmi nayatra vadaha. I do not know anything beyond. For me, what this universe is God. This is what he is saying. And he is not saying it just by himself. He is repeating, he is quoting a great uh, text, a great passage from Rig Veda, Nasadhiya Sukta. In the Nasadhiya Sukta, um, beautifully it says, Ko Adhavedaka Yika Pravo Chatim Kuta Ajata Kuta Yam Mizrishtihi Arvak Deva Asya Vizarjane Atha Ko Veda Yata Ababu. Who knows? Who knows? Who can declare it? Kaiha Prabhochate Kuta Ajata. Where did it come from? Whence, whence it was born? Where from where from does this creation come? Kuta Yam Visrishtihi. This is all in Rigveda. But I am not quoting you the Rigveda here. I am quoting you the corresponding portion from Yajurveda uh, portion. That is what, which is what I know. Arvak Deva Asya Visarjane Who knows? The, the gods are created after this creation of all this universe. So they cannot know what was there before. So the gods are later than this world's pro- production. Arvak Deva, the lower gods, Asya Visarjane Na Samartha. They do not know. Atha Kove Dayata Ababu. Oh, probably Brahma himself, the creator himself knows this. 
the first or he was the first origin he was the first one who was created maybe he knows yam srishte yata babuva maybe he knows may maybe he knows from where this was created whether it was created by a plan or it did automatically sparked itself he he must know did he form it all by his will or did he not he whose eye controls this world yadi vadade yadi vana yo asya tyaksha parame pyo man he knows it perhaps perhaps he knows not Kosavangaveda Yadiva Naveda. This is a beautiful quote from Rigveda and the corresponding portion in Yajurveda. This is what Dhruva is repeating here. This is what he is quoting here. So that is the transcendence aspect of the uh, uh, reality. The one word that we have to note here is Sadasat Vishesham. Second line. Sadasat Visheshaṁ Sati and Asati Sati, I told you, is the visible earth, water, fire and Asat, I told you, is the invisible air and space. Sati stands for Sula, whatever is uh, visible. Sūkṣma, Sati. There are the Sati and Asati comes very often in our scriptural literature. Sadasatav Param Beyond cause and effect. Sati is the effect which you see. You see, Sula. Asat is the invisible karana, cause. So the cause and effect. So he is the almighty, the reality is beyond cause and effect. Sadasatav param. That is why in Gita, at one place he says, Sadasat chaha marjuna. At another place he says, Nasat tanna nasat uchyate, 13th chapter. In another place, 9th chapter, I think, he says, Sada Sat Chaha, Sati Asati. I am both Sati and Asati. In the other place, he says, Neither Sati nor Asati. When he says, Neither Sati nor Asati, he means neither existent nor non-existent. Because the Almighty reality cannot be put into statements like, It is this or that. Etat Tadit Yanit Desha. Lalita Atrishati. Etat Tadit Yanit Desha. Etat is this. Sati, that, this or that. You cannot say it is this or that. Neither, neither, both. So both are right, both are wrong. So, Sadasat Chaham Arjuna. I am the Sati, I am also Asati. Being and non-being. I am the being, I am also the non-being. I am the cause, I am also the effect. So these are beautiful uh, um, um, uh, depictions. Of our uh, reality here, the philosophical reality. So that is shloka number eight, <coughs> and then we go to shloka number nine. Kalpanta ye ta dakilam jatare nagrannam shete puman swadhrganam ta sakasta dange yenna abhisin duruga kanchana loka patma garbedyuman bhagavate. Pranatosmita smai, excuse me. <coughs> Kalpantaye tadakilam jatare nagrinam. Kalpante, at the end of the kalpa, kalpa is a day of Brahma. So in the morning he creates, in the evening everything dissolves into him. Kalpante. It is also <coughs> not into Brahma, into the, into the Lord Almighty. Brahma himself goes into him. Kalpante yeta dakilam jatarena grannam. In the end of the kalpa, all this that you see, jatarena, in the stomach of the Lord, it goes. Shete puman swadragamanta zakasta danke. What do you do? The great Lord, he simply reclines, relaxes on the folds of the great Ananta. Adishesha, Sotrigya, he is seeing his, all his consciousness is drawn inward. Sotrigya, Sotrigya, Ananta Sakaha Tadanke, Shethe, you relax. Yenna Abhisin Duruga Kanchana Loka Padma Garbed Yuman Bhagavate Pranathosmitas May Yenna Abhisin Duruga, Nabhi, Naval, Sinduruga, then Naval is like an ocean. From that ocean, sprouts Kanchana Lokapadma, the great world lotus 
the golden lotus garbhe in that garbhe everything from that everything emanates for that bhagavan pranatosmi tasmai i am making my prostrations that is this shloka in this shloka again <coughs> the key word for philosophy that we notice here is kanchana loka padma garbhe kanchana loka padma garbhe created brahma emanated from the stem of the golden lotus in the navel of the lord therefore he is called hiranya garbha hiranya means low gold but there is another reason see brahma holds is responsible for is the caretaker of the container of all our vasanas of all our vasanas of all the beings in the world every being has a store of vasanas the store of vas you see all that kind of uh, uh, philosophical ideas they come into one one idea here so brahma holds the container of the all the vasanas of all the jivas each man's jiva is in a separate compartment within that container so what does gibbama do at the time of creation he releases the corresponding vasana of the corresponding jiva into the world so that he may reap the consequences of his vasanas and do whatever either good or bad he has to go through his samsara and so this is brahma's responsibility so he is his responsibility is to release us into the world so that we may exhaust our vasanas but what do we do we don't exhaust our vasanas we add to our vasanas we further add to our vasanas and so we again we are being born again as a birth and death in further realms so that is why isha upanishad says isha vasya upanishad hiran mayena patrena sansatyasya bihi sammukham tattvam pushan na pavrino satya dharma ye drishtaye hiran mayena patrena patra piyate anena isi patra piyate anena isi patram that is one who drinks by this but not here drinks consumes experiences so we experience is it anena by these vasanas they ca- contribute to our experience that golden patra golden reservoir is in the hands of brahma this patra is the golden cal- uh, container so the vasana patram is our legacy creator brahma transfers this vasana patram from our previous birth to the next birth and it so on but he knows he is the only seer he sees it all through he knows the past he knows the present he knows the future he knows what is our individuality but now what happens to our individuality our individuality names forms our inner organ mind all these are created by this hiranyagarbha so the prayer says the ishopanishad prayer says he is the savita because he is the gives the light to all of them therefore he is the savita the sun we ask him and plead with him to take back the blinding rays the sun's rays are our vasanas he take back those blinding rays from himself so that we can eradicate our vasanas that is why that prayer says hiranmayena patrena satyasya bihi tammukam those blinding rays it hides the reality from our vision so pushan apavruno please remove these golden rays remove our vasanas help me to eradicate our vasanas so that is the great idea in that kanchana loka padma garbhe the next shloka number 10 is going to be a very important shloka tonnitya mukta it shloka but we are not doing that now because it is going to talk about gayatri it is going to give you the swarupa lakshana of the lord so for that one shloka alone we will have another session lokas samasta sukhino bhavant